Hey everyone and welcome to my trying romance books for the first time reading vlog. I have famously said for years now that romance books and romance in general is not my thing and then last year I read Heartstopper and I absolutely loved it and I devoured it in a day. And it got me thinking about all of the other things I watch and read that have romance in that I really enjoy. So, for example, we have the Shadowhunters series, which I really, really enjoy. That is basically just a fantasy romance. Um, I also really love watching things like Grey's Anatomy, which is, there's a lot of romance in there. And I'm always pulling for certain characters like Meredith and Derek and then Meredith and Hot Transplant Guy. And then also like Jackson and Maggie and everybody else. I was fully there for all of those ships. Um, I also loved Poldark when that was airing and that is literally a historical romance which I absolutely loved. I've watched several other like um, period dramas that were also romances that I really enjoyed. I watched Red, White and Royal Blue last year and really enjoyed it and things like this and I suddenly realised that actually I may not mind romance so what I'm going to be doing today is reading several different romances and seeing if actually the romance genre is actually for me and I was just lying to myself. So I've got quite a few here. I've got um, Chef's Kiss. I've also got Red, White and Royal Blue. I've got Simon vs. the Homo Sapien Agenda. I've also got um, Felix Ever After, Rep Requiem of the Rose King, which is a manga. If I go back to my list as well, I've got Creamer, Virtually Yours, Roots, Love and War, Project Nought, and a whole load of others. And I'm essentially just going to be working my way through all of these, or as many as I can do, um, before Valentine's Day, and seeing what I enjoy in terms of contemporary romance. And I'm going to be taking you along with me, I thought it'd be a really fun experiment to take you along with me for. And before I get started I've also got to give a massive massive shout out to Olivia Savannah from Olivia's Catastrophe because I asked her for some recommendations and she gave me the Felix Ever After as well as Simon vs the Homo Sapien Agenda recommendations so thank you so much to Olivia for giving me these suggestions. I really really appreciated it because I was sitting there going and panicking because I had no idea what I was doing. So any Anyway, I'm now going to be starting. I think I'm going to start with Chef's Kiss because it is also um, graphics a thon at the moment and I wanted to start off with a comic so that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be starting with Chef's Kiss and letting you know what I think about it as I read it. So first of all I'm having to use my phone here because I suddenly remember that the Libby app is not the greatest for reading comics on my laptop because you can't zoom in and it's just generally really annoying but anyway Ben, as a character, is incredibly relatable because of the amount of books he's got, like, yes, I completely and utterly understand that he's got comic books, he's got, like, um, like, bedtime reads, loads and loads of comics and graphic novels, which, relatable to say the least, and then one box of clothes. I mean, I admit I've got more clothes than that, but definitely relatable so far in terms of the bookworm feeling. And also I do quite like the artwork as well. It's a pretty good artwork at the moment so I'm quite enjoying it. So far I'm really liking this especially like the artwork but then also that um, Ben's got his friend sort of like as a little fairy sort of talking in his ear kind of thing. I really really like that as like a sort of extension of his consciousness I guess you could say in his thought patterns. I really like that as a concept. I think that's really cute. I'm currently halfway through through and I am definitely really enjoying this. I think it's really sweet, really funny in places and just generally I feel quite warm and fuzzy. Not as warm as fuzzy as I did reading Heartstopper but I am still definitely enjoying this so far. Something I'm really enjoying about this is all of the conversations throughout here about like parental expectations and then also like disappointing your friends and like um, how life changes and how you change as a person as you like try to figure yourself out and what you want from life. All of this kind of thing. I'm really enjoying these types of conversations um, and like it's not all just about the romance or anything. At the moment Ben just fancies Liam um, and is kind of harbouring a crush on him but there isn't really that much like 
romance at the moment we're more like um with ben and his friends and things which i also really enjoy i really enjoy seeing like his relationships outside of his crush on liam and then how they're working and how like um people are sometimes not supportive because i think you've changed and all of this kind of thing i just think it's really important conversations and also really good to have a conversation in a comic where people are using their words to communicate which doesn't really happen that often in my experience so i really really enjoyed that seeing like healthy conversations being had throughout this and then also touching on obviously like parental expectations what you want from life compared to what they want for your life all of this kind of thing all really really good conversations to be having i love the superhero origins of what's in the pick <laughs> just absolutely brilliant there obviously i'm always here for a superhero origin and obviously it was fake but I still think that was really funny, really cute, possibly one of my favourite parts of this whole thing so far. And with that, Chef's Kiss is done. I really, really enjoyed this one. I didn't really have any sort of expectations going into this. I just knew that it was a romance around a young writer who then becomes a chef. And that's all I really knew. And I actually really enjoyed this one. I love the conversation about, like, writing and then also, like, um, getting more experience and trying to, like... Um, Ignore, by the way, the noise of, um, uh, like, that noise in the background. That is a wheelie chair wheeling upstairs in the office on wooden floor. It's very loud. Anyway, so, um, I really enjoyed, like, the conversations around, like, how internships are unpaid and then also how you need experience to get a job in a, um, a certain field, but then if you aren't hired you can't get experience in that field that kind of thing i really enjoyed like the camaraderie between all of the characters and things like this i really like ben as a character um his um whole um like um thoughts and feelings about writing and everything is very very similar to mine as in i love it but it's so hard to like get into that industry and get inspired and all the rest of it i find that really really interesting i really enjoyed that element of it i will say that i do wish there had been maybe a little bit more romance because this is meant to be like a romance um comic so i think i would have liked them to have gotten together a little bit earlier and maybe also a little bit more um with ben's parents and their expectations of him this kind of thing and like how they reacted to him um like staying on as a chef this kind of thing but overall this was a really fun really Really sweet comic and I'm going to be giving it four stars and now that I have read chef's kiss I'm now going to go on to Simon versus the homo sapien agenda because this is the one I think is most like heartstopper and I'm trying to get, sort of start myself off with things that remind me of heartstopper because obviously I know I really really enjoyed that so I'm hoping it's going to be the same for um the rest of these books but I'm starting with Simon versus the Homo Sapien Agenda. I think this one is to do with someone like Simon as a character being outed in high school. I don't really know much else. I haven't seen the film. Um, I obviously haven't read the book. Everything I know about this is just from what I've seen on BookTube, BookTok, all the rest of it. So I'm going to make a start on this and update you when I have something to update you on. Four chapters in so far and I'm quite enjoying myself because that is how many pages? It is apparently 63 pages according to the library version which is weirdly 542 pages long when on goodreads it says it's about 360 no idea what's going on there anyway i quite like the setup of this i like that we get straight into like nick's world and finding out about blue and the fact that he's hiding the fact that he's gay from everybody at this point we're finding out more about his friends and then also the fact that martin is blackmailing him this kind of thing and then also this connection with blue um who he's secretly emailing off a um anonymous secret email list and then um like things like this and i will say i am quite enjoying like the pop culture references because i was definitely a teenager on tumblr i'm an adult on tumblr won't lie um and things like this so i quite like the fact that we're getting that kind of thing throughout here it's definitely throwing me back to my teenage years in that sense um i will say that be warned there are a lot of harry potter references in here but i can't really hold that against um becky albertalli because when this was written harry potter was still really really popular and jk rowling wasn't being as loudly transphobic and things like this so i'm gonna sort of give it a pass on that sense because obviously we weren't to know at the time or at least it wasn't well known at the time that jk rowling was 
JK Rowling, I guess you could say. Um, so I'm, like I said, giving that a bit of a pass. But so far, I'm quite liking like Simon's voice in this as well, and how he's a little bit sarcastic and he feels a little bit like a fish out of water um, everywhere. Things like this, I'm really enjoying that. I will say that the Bachelorette conversations are going straight over my head because I've never watched it, but that's just a me thing. But other than that, good starting first three chapters really enjoying them so far definitely this feels hot stopper vibey but yeah i am enjoying it definitely enjoying it so i've just gone to the party scene and um simon has just said that he thought jewish people came from israel so i've just had to quickly look and see where becky albertelli stands on this and she is thoroughly in support of palestine so I will continue reading but I just wanted to point that out because obviously this is a huge thing at the moment and I obviously do not want to be supporting Zionist authors or anything so I've just um, looked it up and she is talking a lot about Palestine and supporting Palestine and things like this so I'm going to continue. The coming out conversations are really really interesting in this especially as we're um, talking about like how difficult it can be and like how every coming out is different and um, how um, Blue has come out to their um, mother who was quite um, supportive of it and then um, Simon has just come out to um, his best friend Abby and she's taken it really well. I really like that scene actually because it felt very sort of calm but you could also feel like the tension in there but also like how much like love and things she still felt for him and how she was completely like I didn't know but thank you for telling me I'm honoured that I was the first person you told and things like this I thought it was a really like really really good conversation to have and I'm just really glad that was in there and overall I'm on chapter 17 now I'm nearly halfway through already and I'm actually really enjoying myself I will say. I don't think I'm enjoying myself as much as I did with Heartstopper because I got all the warm and fuzzies from that but definitely enjoying this. This is definitely really enjoyable and there's a lot of conversations obviously around like being in the closet, finding like ways to come out and if you want to come out and all of these types of conversations that are so so important and they're being done quite well in my opinion in this and I am quite enjoying that as well as like the flashbacks to high school experiences despite the fact that I was never like on stage I was never part of anything like that, there was no Waffle House to go to or anything else, the closest we had was a Wimpy, I do not know if that's like a universal thing but we had a Wimpy and I used to go there very occasionally and my social life was just generally not this exciting at all, I spent most of my time at home but it's just kind of giving me those high school vibes in a few places which I am quite enjoying. On to day two and I have now just finished Love and War and this was like a sports YA romancy thing and this was not my thing entirely. I um, have absolutely no real care for sports whatsoever but I thought I'd try it out because it's a YA um, romance thing. I was like oh maybe it could be for me but no, it was about a team who um, played tug of war and one of them like kissed another boy on the team um, last summer and it's um, like picking up from when the school like turn picks back up again and he's uh, like the one who kissed him has gone to the other um, like rival team now in the other school and won't really talk to him and stuff and it's sort of like following um, the guy left behind and the new guy who is a dancer and like as they start to fall for each other and things and I just found it all sort of very sort of one note I guess you could say there wasn't really any sort of like characterization between the characters or anything I can't really tell you anything about them like at all there was no real explanation as to like um, why these characters were feeling like they were or why they were acting like they were and I just didn't really care for it in the end, so I'm only going to give it a two star because it wasn't problematic or anything. It just didn't work for me. It just wasn't for me. I don't think sports romance is for me. I can deal with, like, the rugby bits in, like, Heartstopper. That's fine. But if it's entirely based around sports, not for me. Um, I've just got up to chapter 21, so uh, Simon has now been outed on the um, Tumblr, um, and he's um, like still talking to Blue and things like this, but not really telling him what has happened, um, but that he has had to come out to his family, which was actually a scene I quite enjoyed, I should mention. I did quite enjoy that scene because that was 
it felt very very real in the different ways people reacted like his dad coming out with a slightly homophobic joke and other people coming out with like um trying to be supportive and things like this i really enjoyed all of that so that was a really good and it um like scene that felt very very real um in terms of like nick's friends i'm not exactly happy with leah or nick at the moment because they knew that the message had come out on the um school like tumblr and they didn't tell him they were going to tell him and then they didn't and so he had to find that out for himself and i feel like if they were like really his friends i guess you could say they would have told him or at least told him to go and look at it or something um and sort of like give him that moment to like get a heads up essentially so i think they should have done that definitely um because obviously this is going to be such a difficult thing and everything else and i think they should have told him um and also i'm trying to figure out who blue is and at the moment i think i want to say it's nick but all of the details about blue are not adding up to it being nick so i don't think it is but at the same time i've just got this like vague memory of seeing like photo sets funny enough on tumblr um when the film first came out and i think it's nick but i don't I don't remember but it can't be Nick because none of the details add up. So I don't know. But in my mind I think it's Nick. Or it's the guy who's black blackmailing Simon. At which point that's going to be definitely not okay. Even more than it's already not okay that he's blackmailing him. But I don't know. But I don't think... I can't think of anybody else it could be. So I don't know at the moment but... There's somewhere in the back of my head I think it's Nick. But I don't want to look it up to see if I'm right because I'm enjoying this and I want to find out as I read the book but I don't know I've just got this vague memory of it being Nick. I don't think I'm right though. I don't think I'm right. Either way I'm going to carry on reading to find out. And I've now just finished Simon vs the Homo Sapien Agenda just as the sun is about to whack me in the eye so apologies right now for the sun that's going to be moving across this way in this clip but anyway I've just finished it because I couldn't stop. I literally just started reading and then I just flew through it essentially I just flew through it I've still got the first Simon and Blue emails to read but I've read like the main story now um I was not expect expecting Blue to be Bram or whatsoever I was not expecting that and I think it's because in my head I was thinking Bram and Garrett were very much like Kurt and Ram from Heathers but like the really nice kind people instead like the kind versions but i think it's just because they were like the soccer jocks they were always together and so in my brain my brain just went kurt and ram and that just stuck in my head so i was like no it can't be them because it can't be like kurt and ram and that is really bright now so i'm just gonna do we're just gonna deal with it anyway i'm just gonna move over a little bit so i don't end up with the sun too far in my eyes but Anyway, um, I didn't expect it to be Bram whatsoever, but I'm kind of glad that it was. Um, I do like that it was um, Bram. I think him and Simon were very, like, well matched to each other, I guess, in a lot of ways. And I like that the book didn't end immediately on them finding out about each other, but we saw the first couple of days of their relationship. I thought that was really fun and really nice. Um, I did also um, like the conversations around, obviously, like, coming out and then also Simon's parents apologising to him um, or at least his dad apologising to him for being quite like um, making a lot of homophobic jokes and stuff and saying like look if we do if I carry on doing this and you're offended by it or whatever you've got to tell me pull me up on this do not let me get away with this which I quite like um, because obviously that's showing accountability and like willingness to change which I really liked um, I also um, quite liked everybody else's reactions I will say I wasn't fond of Leah's reaction in a lot of ways because like she was jealous that she was like one of the last people to know but at the same time it's and I feel like that's entirely down to the person who is coming out to you's decision when they tell you you know and I and it's like I I don't know if I like Leah's reaction I understand she's angry and I completely and utterly 
like agree with her with her being like really upset about not being like invited out on the Friday night that's fine that I don't really get but her being angry at Simon I'm not entirely sure about so I'm gonna have to think about um that one but and overall I did just really enjoy this one in the end I like the romance of it I like the characters of it I do think it was slightly cheesy in places and a little bit sort of like far-fetched but I think you can get away with that in like romance books and stuff like this so it didn't really bother me that much and definitely I just really enjoyed it and I think I'm gonna be giving it a four star so this is a fantastic start um, to this reading vlog and this experiment. I'm now going to finish off and read the first emails that are at the end of this book um, between Simon and Blue. And then I think I'm going to take a break for the weekend because this weekend is my mum's um, birthday weekend. So we're going to be doing a lot of um, like fun things. We're going to see Argyle at the cinema. And, and then we're off to go see Peter Pan Goes Wrong, which I'm really excited about because we've we booked these tickets ages ago. And it's kind of like a send up kind of thing of... Of like a normal play of Peter Pan but it's kind of like what can go wrong will go wrong I highly um, recommend if you don't know much about this type of thing looking up mischief theatre because they've done quite a few like TV specials and things which are always really fun and um, we end up in his Derek's watching it so really excited to do both of those things and then I will be back on Monday reading either Felix Ever After or Red White and Royal Blue I will see what I feel like when I get there but at the moment I'm going to finish off these emails because I'm really intrigued by these emails and to see how this relationship started and see how it grows through to the end. It's now Monday and I had a really good fun weekend. We watched Argyle which was absolutely brilliant. Um, it's a really good sort of like semi parody spy movie. If you like Kingsman you'll definitely like Argyle I'd say. Um, it's a little bit more romantic in places but I still really really enjoyed it. I thought it was really funny and I mean it wasn't really reinventing the wheel or anything but it was still a really great fun at time. And then yesterday we went to see the play that goes wrong in Canterbury and it was absolutely hilarious I did not stop laughing if you do not know what the play that goes wrong is or mischief comedy is it's essentially a um, group of actors who do um, send up plays essentially or they are supposed to be proper plays but um, what can go wrong will go wrong so like bits of set will fall off um, the um, characters who are flying in on strings because this one was Peter Pan like the um, strings will go all wrong and they'll end up like flying into everything people forget their lines all of this kind of thing and it is just absolute chaos and absolutely hilarious we saw the Peter Pan goes wrong um, adaption that was on the TV a few years ago um, which may still be on the iPlayer actually um, and we really really loved it so we wanted to see this when it was in Canterbury so we went and it was absolutely brilliant we had the best time watching it all over again and I have to commend the actors as well because there was a couple of moments where the audience started shouting out things um because they sort of like pretended it was going to be a panto kind of thing so there was some audience interaction and some of the kids started like shouting out things and the guy playing Captain Hook somehow kept it together and I don't know how he did it because the entire audience was falling about laughing and he somehow managed to stay in that character and I don't know how he did it because you can see him cracking but he didn't crack and it was like a huge commendation to him for doing that because I would have gone I would have had to have left the stage 
laugh for a bit and then come back on again and like carry on but I couldn't have done what he did but that was incredible and then also when we were looking through the um like program thing we also realized that Sandy Toxfix's son Theo was also in this which I did not realize I didn't realize he was going to be in this so that was a really nice surprise because obviously I've seen him on like QI a couple of times when he's done a couple of bits on QI so it was really cool to see him like acting and stuff he was possibly one of my favorite characters of the lot and just generally I had a really good time and now I'm back home again and I'm basically just trying to catch up on comics because I did not read any over the weekend and so I've started with Virtually Yours which is a comic about two people who are um, on this virtual dating app which is kind of like a fake dating app kind of thing where you can sort of virtually date fake boyfriends this kind of thing um and one of them is one of the ones who's doing the replying and posing as like one of these like fake profile things and the other one who's using it to get her mother off her back because her mother is always talking about settling down and all the rest of it and i just wanted to quickly point out one bit here because there's a bit where um the guy who's working for this app is going through the profiles and he's just found one um, which is obviously our other main character and it says I like long walks on the beach and when I say long I mean it depends if I feel like it and when I say walks I mean vegging on the couch and when I say beach I mean Netflix marathons I've never related to something so more in my life I, I, I do not do long walks on the beach I do vegging on the couch watching Netflix so relatable to say the least definitely relatable on that front so this comic is only kind of half working for me in terms of like storyline and stuff. It's not really sort of like grabbing me as much as I had hoped. But I will say that the um, like references throughout here are brilliant because one of our main characters, Max, is a really big like comic book nerd. So he's always talking about comics. We've already had references to like Rogue and Gambit, uh, Gambit and things. And now he's just gone on a date with his ex-wife, which I'll go into sort of later when I'm talking about this whole comic. But look who's here. That's Crowley and Aziraphale. Crowley and Aziraphale have just turned up in this comic. Like, that's epic. That's really epic. Like, the actual storyline of this is not working for me, like, that much. But the pop culture references are definitely bringing it. Absolutely bringing it. Virtually Yours is now done. And it was just the definition of, like, alright. Like, it was just, you're pretty sort of average like read to be honest it wasn't really anything like particular particularly cute it didn't really grab me and also it um touched on things like um emotional and physical abuse and recovering from that but it didn't really go into it in any sort of detail which i think um sh um it should have been covered a lot more because of those are really really uh, like serious topics especially when it is a woman abusing a man because we don't really see that that often so i think that should have been a bigger conversation in this and like the recovery from that kind of relationship definitely should have been covered um like a lot more there was also the fact that um like our male main character who um had like was the victim um his past was just basically told to um the girl he fancied without his permission which is obviously not okay either because that is something like very very personal and like um you should be the one to disclose that if you ever want to but this kind of thing so that was also a little bit sort of iffy for me as well so overall that was just all right it was not my favorite in the world and yeah i think i'm only gonna give it a two star i will probably like never read that again because it was just generally all right like what i will say is that i really appreciated the pop culture references especially that crowley and aziraphale bit but apart from that it was just all right it was just plain all right i've now just read strangers in paradise by terry moore and this was not good either um because this one definitely felt very 90s but it felt like it was trying to go more like 60s kind of thing i guess you could say in terms of like sexism and his views on women it was all very very stereotypical there was also a um like lesbian main character as well who was very like your classic sort of man hating lesbian type thing then you had the straight um female character who was uh, like very very sort of like needy and like very sort of like compliant and things like this and just very very sexist all round um everybody was just very sort of stereotypical and just sort of very 2d 
um, there was a lot of like nudity that didn't need to be in there and just wasn't for me really wasn't for me so that wasn't good so I've just had two very bad comics I'm hoping that the next comics I read are going to be better for this vlog I think next time as in tomorrow I will be reading some on Marvel Unlimited because I've got a few um, uh, like Marvel Unlimited um, Infinity comics which are the Love Unlimited stuff so I'm probably going to read those because I trust Marvel comics a lot more at the moment so I think I'll go with those um, and also I just really fancy reading some Marvel but right now I'm going to start with a, another book and I think I'm going to read Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar. I think that is going to be my next one because I've got two other books that I want to read for this. Like after obviously finishing Simon vs. the Homo and Sapien Agenda. One is Felix Ever After and the other one is Red, White and Royal Blue. And at the moment Felix Ever After is shorter. So I'm going to go with that one first. See what I think about it. And fingers crossed this is going to be better than those last two comics because those were very disappointing to say the least. So yesterday I started Felix Ever After and I'm about 100 pages in which is about six chapters on the um, library app and it's reasonably enjoyable. I wouldn't say I'm enjoying it as much as like Heartstopper or um, Simon vs the Homo Sapien Agenda but it's reasonable right now. I'm not like hating it or anything but I think it's taking me a little bit of time to like um, properly get into it but anyway we are now on the 6th of February which means I need to read two more comics to be fully caught up on the 29 graphic novels in 29 days challenge and today I've gone for a little bit of a safer bet which is the Love Unlimited Marvel Infinity comics because in Marvel we trust around here and so I've gone for these ones and these are just short little um, Infinity comics essentially um, based around various characters and their romances and how I'm going to be counting this because it's not available on Goodreads at the moment in full is that I'm going to be counting each individual character's story as one graphic novel because that seems to be the easiest way to do it. And the story I'm specifically reading right now is between uh, Miss Marvel and Red Dagger. They are two characters obviously from the Miss Marvel um, G. Willow Wilson run and um, they have had a sort of sort of will they won't they maybe got together maybe not kind of relationship um they live in two separate countries um and um they've been thrown together again um recently because there's been a string of thefts from a museum and they just kind of get to know each other again right now and this was definitely a good one to go for especially after a string of quite disappointing comics because in marvel we trust and this is really fun at the moment i'm really enjoying seeing like kamala getting to know um red dagger again and and like the two of them like starting to get to know each other and starting to trust each other again and the fact that there's still this chemistry even though they've kind of not really been together and they've been separated for a while it's been really fun um reading this i'm only on the second part of this so far but this was definitely a good choice miss marvel and red dagger now finished and this one was a really sweet one i will say that the villain was a little bit sort of cheesy and easily defeated but the point of these comics is to explore like the romance and stuff so i'm not particularly bothered about that but it was a really sweet look at like young love and how being a superhero can affect that this kind of thing really really enjoyed it so i'm going to give it four stars i've now moved on to a story about viv vision and she is the synthesoid daughter of vision from the tom king run and um can i just say i really like that they brought back sparky because sparky is from the comics as well and sparky was yeah sparky did die in the comics as well but he's now been brought back so i really like that there is a green sparky in here so that's always fun but at the moment it looks like viv in this one is a little bit heartbroken or is just trying to like figure out her um like romantic relationships and stuff because she is, is a synthesoid and it's really fun to see that she does have a friend saying like look we can do the whole rom-com and ice cream thing and all the rest of it if you want to but you also need to get out there and experience things you can't just learn about these types of things through reading about them and like watching films and stuff so this is really interesting so far and I do really like Viv I'm just remembering how much I really like Viv as a character by reading this one so definitely a good start because this is only the first one but definitely a good start so in this Viv has a crush on a girl and has just sort of like met up with her for the first time and she's messaging her teammate Amka and she's just sent this, she thinks I'm cute, please advise, because obviously Amka has got a bit more, like, um, experience with relationships and stuff, whereas Viv has sort of 
never been really that lucky in love from what I remember so it's really interesting to see that she's just like please help I don't know what to do and I really like that we're getting these text messages throughout here and it's like she's talking to the girl she's got a crush on and stuff while also she is messaging Amka as well like what do I do I don't know what to do help I really enjoy this it's really funny and really sweet and I just it's making me love Viv even more I didn't think it was possible for me to love Viv more than I already do but Apparently uh, my love of Viv is growing because I just really enjoy this and I just find Viv to be such a fun, cute little character. I've now finished Viv's story as well and I really enjoyed this one. I really like that it was centred around the idea of protecting community from like gentrification and also like from extreme policing and things like this. I really enjoyed that aspect of it. And I also really like that we were focusing on Viv and CJ's like growing relationship here as well because it was the first time they'd actually met in person and they were starting to like flirt with each other and then like it evolved into it being like their first date is them literally protecting the community and things and it was just really fun really really sweet I really enjoyed this one actually I thought it was very very cute in a lot of ways I really like that it was a female female relationship as well and this series isn't just focusing on um the straight relationships things like this I really enjoyed all of that I still really love Viv as a character CJ was also really cool I really liked the message of this one in general and I'm giving it four stars and while I would just really like to just carry on reading all of these I am going to stretch them out and read like one a day now so now I'm going to go back to Felix Ever After because this is a library hold that I am going to have to finish soon so I'm going to get on with it now. I'm now up to chapter 7 of Felix Ever After I will say this is slightly annoying me in a sense because um Felix has, is obviously going to this art school and everything and he hates Declan which is fair enough because Declan is a bit of a twat but um, he's absolutely certain that it was Declan who's managed to get into his Instagram account and find all of his private photos and post them before Felix transitioned and dead named him and now everyone knows and he's absolutely certain it's Declan and I'm like why aren't you thinking about Marisol here? Because Marisol is the one that Felix dated for two weeks and then she said it was misogynistic that he was trans and things like this. And I'm like, why aren't you thinking about it being Marisol? Because she's right there. And I'm like, I don't think it's Declan. I think it's Marisol. And the fact that Felix isn't seeing this or considering anyone apart from Declan is kind of annoying me because I'm like how are you not exploring anybody else outside of that you're absolutely certain it's Declan and you're certain you're going to get revenge on him but how do you know for certain it's him because it could be Marisol or literally anyone else but Marisol seems to be a really good like candidate for this quite frankly because she's already made a couple of like um comments that feel slightly transphobic and things like this and I'm like are you sure it's not her because to me that I don't know I'm just it's obviously not going to turn out to be Declan because that'd be too easy but I'm just like why do you just suddenly go all in it is Declan and no one else I don't know it's just annoying me in that sense I'm like why aren't you seeing anybody else around this and think and I'm just like why haven't you investigated further like you've just gone it's Declan and that's all you're doing you've got blinders on now you just think it's Declan and I just think I would like Felix to maybe think a little bit outside of the box on this one and not just blame one person with absolutely like no um like evidence for it I guess you could say yeah that is quite annoying at the moment and obviously he's now messaging Declan on Instagram um as like a catfish account kind of thing and it's clear that him and Declan are going to start falling for each other and I'm like I don't know if I'm going to like this one I don't know if I'm going to like this one because that as a concept it just kind of annoys me so we'll see but this one is a little bit more of a rocky start for me to say the least I just DNF'd um, Felix Ever After and I apologise right now to anybody who really enjoyed this book especially Olivia Savannah who recommended this book to me but it just wasn't for me. I found Felix to be a very annoying character in how he was so single-minded that it was Declan and it was hell-bent on like revenge for what he thought Declan did to him even though like it, he hadn't considered literally anybody else like Marisol was right there and I have looked it up it wasn't Marisol but um like I was 
like why aren't you exploring anybody else here you're just hell bent on revenge on him and then how Declan when they were messaging each other anonymously or he was anonymously messaging Ezra not knowing who he was he texted him like I think I'm falling in love with you and it only been like two days and I don't do insta love I do not do insta love and I was like that's just a red flag right there um like why are you falling for someone you don't even know who they are you've only been speaking for like two days you're like telling them so much stuff um that you don't tell anybody else which I understand is easier to do when you're anonymous which is why like Simon versus some of uh, the homo sapien agenda worked but this one I was like you literally have known them for two days why are you saying like I think I'm falling for you um like already I was a bit like whoa there that's a bit much and I just I just wasn't vibing with this book put it this way I was not vibing with this book whatsoever I was about to carry on with the Marvel Unlimited Love Unlimited thing and I've just had to skip a couple of them one because there was a character I didn't really care about because they're like a minor shield agent so I didn't really care about them the second one was about Wolverine but it tied into X lives X deaths of Wolverine which I can't read yet because there's a couple of other like Krakoan era things I need to read at first which I'm doing later on this month and then the next one was about Wiccan and Hulkling and I also can't read that one because that also goes into like their latest adventures and I haven't even read Empire yet which is on my priority list for the year to be fair but I haven't read it yet either way it's now skipped over to Deadpool and we've just had this bit here which is exactly what I'm talking about which is Wade um obviously fourth wall breaking as always saying that this mook because he's in a um like bar at the moment which is filled with bad guys there are no cops allowed no superheroes all the rest of it is just for like the bad guys who want a drink and he says this mook i don't recognize he must be here because knee cheesy didn't want to deal with any continuity conflicts because the author of this is fabian nicheese if i remember rightly i apologize right now if i've mispronounced that but anyway um it's poking fun at him and then also the fact that quite a few comics do rely on continuity and knowing the continuity and all the rest of it which can be a pain in the ask when you just want to pick up a singular comic and read it but I do like this was mentioned especially as I was just having this problem and I had to skip a whole load because they are like tying into larger things I haven't read yet so just wanted to point that out quick. So this one is looking less like a romance and more the idea that Wade has now got this like golden belt thing that he's gotten off someone and it's making him a lot kinder and people are a lot nicer to him. This kind of thing. So he's decided to not be Deadpool anymore. He's decided to be Love Paul and just look at this final panel for this uh, one it just says my name is love paul and i am here to help you get boinked <laughs> it's just classic wade <laughs> i love wade so much i need to read more deadpool comics i really do i am saving them up for july when the film comes out but <laughs> i have such a childish sense of humor but i just love that he said that <laughs> I'll eventually stop laughing and stop being a child but that was just really funny to me. This panel has just happened so Spider-Man has just shown up and has just webbed up the bad guy's mouth so then Wade has gone Spider-Man is usually my mouth you're gagging and uh, Peter has just gone phrasing and also pink looks very well on you. Did I just say that out loud? And what I love is that if we are talking about Deadpool and a comic all about love it had to have Spider-Man in it because the two are actually soulmates in canon. It has been confirmed within the Spider-Man Deadpool team up by Robbie Thompson where um, someone is trying to um, get, I think it's Wade? No, it's Spider-Man. They capture Spider-Man and try and get his soulmate to like blackmail him and then Wade turns up because Wade is actually his soulmate and gets called into it. So they are actually canon soulmates even though it's a lot like romantic within the comics. I still love that they are soulmates. I should also mention by the way that um, Peter at this point in the comics is a fully grown consenting adult. So do not worry. There is no like creepy nature here or anything else with Peter being a child and Wade being an adult. Both of them are very much adults at this point. But I just love the fact that Peter is now turned up and there is already a new end up. I love that so much and I love like um the fact that if we're talking about Wade Wilson and love we have to mention Spider-Man because the two of them are canon soulmates if that's romantic or platonic or whatever they are soulmates and I love that he's just shown up I love that so much and that's the Deadpool Love Unlimited um, finished and I really enjoyed this one. This one was less about like 
um, Deadpool falling in love with someone and more about like romance in general and things like this and I just generally really enjoyed this I really liked the characters obviously I really think they nailed Wade's um, like sense of humour I like the jokes in there um, I like the overall message of it and just generally it was a really fun time and I'm giving it four stars and now that I've finished my comic for the day it is now time to read a book and so I am going with Red, White and Royal Blue. I chose this one because I have watched the movie and I really really enjoyed the movie so I'm hoping the same is going to be said for the book. I'm a little bit nervous but kind of excited at the same time so let's see what happens with Red, White and Royal Blue. I've read through the first chapter now and this is definitely an interesting start. I did enjoy the start. I feel like it really gave um, Alex his personality um, like came through quite um, easily and quite quickly um, and then it also set up this rivalry between him and Henry quite well as well um, so I really enjoyed it. that element of it. Um, I have heard that there is a bit of criticism for this book because it's clearly written by an American so they don't really quite understand the um, like how royalty works in the UK so that'll be um, intriguing to see what I think of that at the moment I think it seems quite accurate but like I said I'm only one chapter in but definitely a good start definitely enjoying this so far and it's already making me want to rewatch the movie again because I only saw it once like the week it came out I think it was and I haven't seen it since so now I'm already kind of like I want to rewatch the movie so that's always a good sign but Definitely a good start, um, definitely a good opening chapter and I shall see what I think as I continue. I've just read the second chapter and again I really like this one, I really like seeing like these two starting to get to know each other a bit after like um, just hating each other for so long. I really like seeing like Alex saying like look I'm always going to be compared to you and I'm never going to measure up this kind of thing to Henry because obviously he is um, like the son of the first female president, he is also um, like mixed race and things like this, I find that really interesting. I really like their conversation around um, Star Wars as well. I will say some of the more American based references are going a little bit over my head because obviously I'm I only know what comes out over here I don't really know like um, anything else so some of this is going a little bit over my head but I am still quite enjoying this one I am enjoying their like um, sort of enemy banter kind of thing and like I'm really excited to see how these two slowly start to like get to know each other and start to fall in love with each other and things. I'm finding that really interesting. I also really like Alex's relationship with Nora as well as his relationship with his sister as well. I find all of that quite interesting. June, that was her name. Her name is June. Um, I'm trying to remember though, I don't think June is in the film. I don't think June is in the film. And then they're also saying that obviously his parents are divorced and I don't think his parents are divorced in the movie. I could be wrong on that, but I'm like 90% sure his parents aren't divorced in the movie either, so I think they've changed a few bits. I don't think that, like, I'm gonna definitely have to rewatch this movie because I have forgotten a lot, but I'm pretty sure that June is not in the movie and Alex's parents aren't divorced. Alex is about to have dinner with his family and um, it's just introduced his stepdad, who's Leo, and he's just said he's um, fiddling with the wiring uh, for like the TV or something. It says so, um, probably rewiring it to do something that would make more sense in an Iron Man comic and I'm like, love the reference. I will always love an Iron Man reference or a Marvel comic reference. I did appreciate the Star Wars references though I'm more of a Trekkie than a Star Wars girl to be honest but I still appreciated those as well but it's nice to have a little sort of Iron Man reference in the middle of there as well. The turkey conversation where Alex has just like rung Henry and gone it's like they can see into your soul cornbread knows my sins Henry cornbread knows what I've done and he's here to make me atone just really tickled me it just really tickled me and the fact that Alex has phoned Henry so he can hear these turkeys gobbling and be like look this is a like scary slightly frightening noise and now they've just shut up is just perfect comedian timing and like we all know this happens it happens every single time when you go to show someone something the thing stops so that's just brilliant bit of like timing that i will say it's so true to life in a lot of ways i really like that these two have started as well to just start to talk to each other and get to know each other and they are now just like texting each other like random things the whole time and things and i love that they're now just talking about turkeys at thanksgiving that is such like a friend thing to do where you're quite close to someone you just start texting them like the most random stuff I know I've done that in the past so I really like that they're doing that now and I'm finding their conversation really quite endearing and I'm really liking seeing the two of them 
start to get to know each other and start to hate each other less and are starting to be like surprised by each other in the sense that obviously Alex was surprised that Henry likes Star Wars and also Star Trek actually and he knows quite a lot about Star Trek. Also he was against like the British Empire as well and he's not happy with like living off the proceeds of like everything the British Empire did all of those years ago and things and he wants to live off his father's money that his father left him things like this I find that quite commendable by the way I do like that that was a conversation in here because I wasn't expecting that to be a conversation to like come from like a English prince character so I'm really glad that was in there because obviously that is a topic of conversation that we need to talk about more in terms of like the money that we got from the horrendous British Empire in the first place and what we're now doing with it or like what the royal family's doing with it and things I find all of that really really interesting that it's actually been put into this so very glad about that conversation as well even if it is brief and yeah I'm just really liking these two getting to know each other I'm definitely really enjoying this a lot. I feel like this is sort of like a more adult version of Heartstopper I guess you could say. I keep on comparing everything to Heartstopper because Heartstopper was like the first romance I've read in like 10 years but I'm definitely getting that kind of like vibe to it in terms of like these two guys getting to know each other and starting to like each other and things. There's just more of a hate to love type relationship going on here compared to friendship to lovers like in Heartstopper but either way definitely really enjoying this. So Henry has now just kissed Alex and Alex is having a bit of a sort of panic because he didn't realise he was bi before then um, and I think they've changed that in the film so he doesn't have like that sexuality crisis or anything so it's quite interesting to read it in the book format because I wasn't expecting that. I always thought Alex knew at the start of the story that he was bi so it's quite interesting to read this take on it with him still sort of questioning his sexuality and trying to figure out um, what his sexuality is and whether this means he likes Henry and wants to date Henry or just wants like whatever he wants from Henry and things like this so I find all of that quite interesting um I also quite like how um kind of supportive Nora is in her like slightly analytical way um by slightly I mean a lot Nora is very very analytical and like numbers based and everything so it's really fun to see like her point of view on this and like seeing her analyzing like how Alex is feeling and like how um like Henry is and things like this I'm not sure how I feel about Nora speculating on Henry's personality because obviously um like she's like oh yeah he's 100% gay and things like this but obviously he's never come out or like even hinted at being gay or anything because obviously there's a, a lot of like homophobia and things so like obviously he hasn't come out and everything and I think it goes into that more like maybe later on in this book um I will say that I am quite surprised that this is entirely from Alex's point of view I thought we were going to get a bit of Henry as well so I find it quite interesting that Alex is the only sort of point of view character in here so we don't get what's going through Henry's thoughts but anyway um I'm not sure how I feel about Nora like speculating on that because generally it's not really okay to be like speculating on people's like sexuality and stuff so um yeah I don't know how I quite feel about that but I do like that we are getting Alex sort of questioning his own sexuality and trying to figure out like if he's straight, if he's bi, if he's gay what, um, or any other um, thing under the LGBTQI plus label so I quite like that we are getting that and he's sort of realising that he may actually not be as straight as he originally thought he was and things like this but I don't know how I feel about Nora basically being like oh yeah Henry's gay kind of thing I don't know how I feel about that I'm now back onto the Love Unlimited just for a bit because obviously I need to get my comic book in for the day before I can start back again on the um book again but anyway I am on to Love Unlimited Spider-Man and this one is all about Miles who is having um problems with his girlfriend and he has asked Peter for advice because obviously Peter has been there before and um Peter is telling Miles all about his initial romance with Gwen Stacy and it's just gone to this point here where Peter has just gone to Gwen Stacy's father's funeral and his funeral was admittedly caused um, during a Spider-Man battle um, rocks fell on him um, from like a bad guy throwing them this kind of thing and Captain Stacy died and now everyone's blaming Spider-Man for this even though he wasn't the one who threw the rocks or anything it was like the bad guy but anyway um, he's had uh, but Peter has now had to leave the funeral or leave the wake anyway to help the Fantastic Four and Miles is going you just left in the middle of your girlfriend's father's wake like 
that's not okay and i quite like that this one's actually going into like the problems with the relationships as well it's not sunshine and rainbows because it's never going to be a sunshine and rainbow job when you are talking about like being a superhero and things like this especially when you've got the secret identity so i really like that this one's going into this and it isn't painting peter as like the perfect boyfriend or anything i do like that it's going into the he had like he was stuck in the middle between a rock and a hard place and that there was really no good choice here but it still kind of sucks that he left his girlfriend at her father's wake so yeah i do like that they have gone into this and this isn't just going to be like a fun fluffy short comic like some of the others have been i'm really glad that this is actually going into like relationship issues and stuff and now i have finished the love unlimited stuff that i was going to read there are a few i haven't read like the wolverine one there's also a um rogue and gambit one there's also a gwenpool one which is actually exploring exploring her being asexual and aromantic which i will definitely be reading at some point but considering this is more of like a romance based um reading vlog i didn't want to read that right now but i will be reading all of those probably next week when i've caught with all the x-men and everything else well madam web but same difference i'll be reading x-men stuff and all the rest of it um later on in the month which will be a separate reading vlog but anyway i did really enjoy this one about miles and peter i enjoyed that it was talking about the importance of like talking to each other and communicating with each other and like talking about your fears and this kind of thing and not like bottling it all up because that can destroy relationships this kind of thing so i'm really glad i read that because that was a really important message and i think that's quite important to like have within books and within comics and this kind of thing so i'm really glad that was there and i'm gonna give it four stars and now i'm going back to red white and royal blue and i am on chapter seven i am still really really enjoying this one i'm enjoying the fact that as well that the um sex scenes are not like fully explicit because i was quite worried about that because i am not used to those types of scenes and i wasn't like like um I was hoping that it wasn't going to be like a fully explicit um like spicy sex scene or anything so I'm glad that it was not quite fade to black but you could still tell what was going on I feel like it was a happy medium there for my comfortability level so I was quite happy with that and I'm just generally really liking their relationship and how they're like flirting with each other and starting to sort of grow together as people and starting to like get together kind of but they're still kind of in that friends with benefits situation but it's sort of growing from there and I'm still really really enjoying this. Something really interesting has just been mentioned and that is um the gay king specifically james the first who fell madly in love with a very fit and exceptionally dim knight um at a tilting match immediately made him a gentleman of the bedchamber and um henry is telling alex about this and i've just gone that sounds really familiar so i've looked it up and it is actually a real thing um but specifically what's really quite fun about this is the fact that the actor who plays henry in the film is now about to be in a drama series based on this playing that knight who became the um gentleman of the bedchamber and i'm like that's quite an interesting turn of events like the fact that this was mentioned in this book he then appeared in the uh, like film adaption of this book and now he's about to play that specific character that henry mentions to alex and i just thought i'd point that out because i find that quite interesting i'm not gonna lie the uh, stuff about the um like american primaries and like the election cycle and things are going a little bit off my head because i do not know that much about how american politics works in terms of like um the rallies and things like this i am very much like someone who knows about the english political system but i really know uh, i don't really know that much about the american system so a lot of this is going over my head but i do understand that rafael luna has now just endorsed the other guy the republican and they're not quite sure why he's done that so uh, other than he probably thinks um that alex's mum is going to lose um so i find that quite interesting so yeah, um, I got that bit, but I will say that the rest of, like, the campaign schedule and things like this is going quite over my head right now. And by quite over my head, I mean completely over my head. In saying that, though, I did enjoy the scenes where, um like alex and henry have just been found out by zara and uh, she's just swearing at the both of them the whole time and just being like 
this is going to be like a nightmare if this is found out in the middle of the election cycle and all the rest of it because he's a prince of England, you're both men, all of this kind of thing and like the election's already like so um, tight and things like this and I did really enjoy that scene because like I really like Zara as a character to be honest. I find her very very fun to like read about because she's so like no nonsense kind of thing. I really enjoy her so I really like that scene but everything to do with like the election cycle and everything just straight over my head up. I won't lie. I've just got to the bit where they go on the lake holiday and Alex has just woken up and Henry's left. I'm like, oh, I forgot that moment happened. I forgot that Henry ghosts him. Because obviously he thinks he can't have this because obviously all the royal expectations and all the rest of it. Whereas Alex can kind of, like, manage it as long as he doesn't, like, um affect the election kind of thing whereas Henry's stuck essentially and I'm like oh am I ready for the next like few chapters of heartbreak because I remember it's heartbreaking because they don't message each other well Henry doesn't reply for a really long time and if I remember rightly in the movie they get outed and I'm just wondering if that's going to happen in the book so obviously they have changed some bits, like the fact that in the film Alex's parents are together and I'm pretty sure Henry doesn't have a sister. Or if he does, well not Alex doesn't have a sister in the um, book if I remember right, no in the film sorry. And now I'm like, is this going to happen, like is the outing going to happen or not? I don't know but... I'm not ready for the heartbreak. I am not ready for the heartbreak. It wasn't as angsty as I remembered, or at least I imagined it being, and they're now back together again, and that whole museum scene was adorable. I love that museum scene so much. It's one of my favourite bits of the film, so I'm really glad that that was actually based in the book, and it's just so sweet seeing the two of them just spending time together, and Henry opening up that sacred part of him to Alex and things and I just thought that was really really cute and now I have to stop reading for the day and I don't want to but this is all really cute and I really really like this I really like this I'm having another wet hair don't care kind of day but anyway I am now putting off reading more angst to do with um red white and royal blue by reading our Haru ride um I apologize right now if I've mispronounced that but it is a manga all about um a middle school girl and her first love and I'm finding this quite interesting so far because it's reminding me a lot of like um turning red in a way because it's all about like first love and that kind of awkward feeling you have when you start liking a boy obviously this boy is like a classmate not like a really famous person like it is in um turning red but it's giving me that kind of vibes which i'm quite enjoying because i really liked that sort of coming of age first love kind of story when i watched in the movie and now this is definitely reminding me of something very very similar and also i'm really liking the art style i don't know if you can see that you can kind of see that i'll put the screenshot here so you can see it properly but i'm really liking like the art style in here and this kind of thing and it's kind of angsty while also being quite sweet at the same time which i'm also quite enjoying what i will say though about this is that there is quite a lot of like sexist comments about like what boys like when are like in girls and like there's a lot of um comments as well about how um our main character keeps on like eating loads of food and things like this and she's always worried about how like boys see her and how girls see her and things like this which is a little bit sexist I won't lie but I'm really enjoying seeing her have these conversations with Mabuchi who is actually Tanaka um but he's changed his name since his parents divorced I'm really enjoying seeing like how um he sort of, like he interacts with her and then how she's interacting with him and how their relationship is kind of not exactly growing but like how they're just interacting with each other and trying to figure out why he's acting like he is this kind of thing i'm finding all that quite interesting but i thought i would point out that there are a few sexist moments in here i've now just finished our haru ride and this was interesting i'd say um i did enjoy like um the connections between the characters and trying to see like how um like why 
they've changed and things like this and like how their relationships are kind of working now this kind of thing but at the same time there was a lot of like judgy sexist comments and like girl hate and things which was quite unnecessary and I don't know if it's fully grabbed me enough for me to go right yeah I'm going to continue on with the series and so I've given it three stars because it was interesting but there was a few elements I wasn't like really enjoying with it and I will have to have a think as to whether or not I'm going to continue on with the series but for now I'm now going to go back to red white and royal blue because I've got about maybe a hundred odd pages left I think it is before I finished it and I would like to get it finished today so I can get this vlog uploaded so yeah I'm gonna go and finish that now and I'll obviously update you as I read and see where this is gonna go I feel like they're about to get outed and I'm a little bit worried about that because obviously that is a really big thing in the film so I'm kind of bracing myself for that but still interested to see how it happens in the book or if it happens in the book I don't know a few things have been changed but we'll see I was just about to say how much I enjoy reading Henry and Alex's emails to each other and like the little quotes that they put in from like other famous figures throughout history and things and then their emails got leaked <laughs> I'm just like ah oh. I knew it was coming I knew it was coming and yet I'm still just sitting there going oh no how are they gonna deal with this I'm just like, I know how they deal with this. I've seen the movie, but I'm still so invested in this. Like, I was expecting to quite enjoy this, but I'm so invested. I am so ridiculously invested in this. And it's like, I'm so invested, I half feel like it's real. And it's like, I know it's so, like, I know it's fiction. But I'm sitting here going, like, so invested. And I'm like, half thinking it's real. This is so good. This is so good. Like, I knew I'd enjoy this, but this is so good. This is so ridiculously good. I love Catherine in this whole confrontation with the Queen and everything, figure out, uh, figuring out what they're going to do, because she's basically turned around and said, I will burn your entire rule to the ground if you do not let Henry be happy. And it just, it kind of reminded me, just to be a Hoovian for a second, but it kind of reminded me of that moment in The Christmas Invasion where the Doctor turns to Harriet Jones Prime Minister's aide and goes, don't you think she looks tired? And in this time, it's Catherine saying, um, like, I will essentially tell people that you keep on forgetting things and, um, like, things like this. And it's like, I love that. I love that so much. That is proper mama bear moment and she hasn't been around that much for like the rest of the book or anything but she's come through when she needs it and I love her immediately. And with that I have now finished Red, White and Royal Blue and I really enjoyed this one. I really really loved it. This sort of enemies to lovers story between Henry and Alex. I love their chemistry with each other. I love the general storyline. I love seeing them like slowly fall in love with each other and then how um, each of their individual families cope with like them being like outed and them also just being like queer and things like this I loved all of that I loved um like all the family dynamics like I said I love the storyline of it their emails to each other were incredibly sweet I love the ending of this one as well I love that it left me feeling with like a sense of hope as well afterwards which I really really enjoyed and just generally I really really like this one and I think I'm going to be giving it a solid four stars because I had such a good time with it and now that I finished red white and royal blue I don't really have anything else to, uh, like to read now because I've simply run out of time and also my uh, like memory cards are also desperately running out of room on them now with uh, I've got so much footage on them so I think I'm gonna leave this video here so I've got time to actually edit this and upload it in time for valentine's day but I think in conclusion I quite like romance books which I was only half expecting I was expecting me to be like no I don't like I still don't like romance I still think it's not the genre for me and while I don't think it's going to become a new favorite genre anytime soon I can definitely see myself reading like more romance in the future and being more open to reading romance in the future and specifically contemporary romance in the future I think I will also be trying out some other like subgenres of um like romance so talking about like fantasy romance and this kind of thing as well maybe paranormal romance and maybe more more things within my wheelhouse of like sci-fi fantasy but um, at the moment I feel confident in the idea that I could quite like reading more romance books in the future 
So I will say that this is a success. I wasn't expecting this to be as successful as it was, but I'm so glad it was because I have really enjoyed myself reading these. And now I'm really excited to see what other romance books there are out there and see which ones I really enjoy. And I think that's all I've got to say. So I want to quickly, before I fully wrap this up, give a massive thank you to Olivia Savannah from Olivia's Catastrophe because without her, this vlog wouldn't have happened because she gave me the recommendation. So massive thank you to Olivia Savannah for that. I'll leave her link down below so you can check out her videos and all of her recommendations because she gives some amazing recommendations. And yeah, with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give me a thumbs up. Comment down below, tell me your favourite romance book. I'd love to know so I can check it out. I'll also leave a link as well down below to all of my social media fun to check it out, including to the Comic Book Sanctum, which is my website dedicated to Marvel Comics, where I talk about quite a lot of the comics I have just mentioned throughout this video, if you are interested in that, as well as a link as well down below to my free digital reading journal template if you want to check out digital reading journaling this year. Or if you just want to see any more of my videos and see my further experimentations in romance books and other genres, please click subscribe here and over here will be the link to my previous video. But until next time everyone, bye! <laughs>